Ladies and gentlemen, behold the class of 2013. Let us now welcome the winner of the 2013 Jidema Foundation Prize for Public Speaking. This prize goes with a cash award of 50,000 Naira. Tilda Nchima to give the valedictory speech for the class of 2013. Tilda Chima, a round of applause, please. To the stars through assiduity. Attention passengers on flight Loyola graduation 2K13. Point of departure of Gita Mangro. Destination stars. This is your captain speaking with the final announcement. We are now approaching our destination with an estimated arrival time of 11 minutes 45 seconds. Please make sure that all baggage is stowed away and all electronic devices are turned off as we prepare for landing. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your flight. Finally, after all these years, we are almost there. Do you know what it's like to wake up every morning to the clanging of bells and ear-splitting bellows of a dark, mesmerizing figure? <laughs> what? What you are about to hear is a tale of the lives of 106 students, including me, who were whisked away from their families and sent to a secondary school, sorry, asylum, that would change their lives forever. Don't get me wrong. I do not use the word asylum with the intent of denoting our yesteryears as ones filled with mentally ill patients in need of special care. The truth can only be much further from that. But if anything, these past six years are adequately qualified by this word for one reason and one reason alone. Life in LGC is just plain crazy. Good afternoon, the commencement speaker, Mr. Okechuku Ophelin, the chairman of the board of trustees, Father Jude Odiaka of the Society of Jesus, the members of the board of trustees, the members of the board of governors, the president, the principal, vice principals, academic and non-academic staff, parents and friends, guests and well-wishers, class of 2013, and of course, the pride. We started off as 124 passengers from different cultures and diverse walks of life, but with one fate in common. We had been selected, 124 of us, out of over 2,000 students across the country to go on a voyage. Our flight, Orientation Loyola 2K7. Our sponsors, our parents, who believed that we needed admission into a health facility, aka asylum, that would not only remove any signs of madness, but also remove the viral madness becoming more and more prevalent in Nigerian society. Our destination, the DEN, a mental facility reputed across the whole of West Africa for being capable of healing the most virulent of madness and shedding off the most insurmountable amounts of fat in children. <laughs> we boarded the flight as children with yet on tap potential on the 6th of September, 2007. Passenger Ojo was at nerve's end. She just wanted to go back home. Passenger Kadiri could not be more thrilled that she was going to meet her dear brother at the asylum. Passenger Mafeni slept through it all. He had no worries. Passenger Abwa would talk to everyone. Passenger Okuru would talk to no one. 
Our two-day orientation flight was meant to prepare us for life in the den. But as we would later on find out, not even two weeks could adequately prepare us for the life we are about to become an essential part of. LJC was not what we had imagined. Before coming to the asylum, all that we had heard had featured happily smiling children, eating cookies and slurping milkshakes for nightcap. <laughs> but after the first weeks, we certainly wondered if we had heard right. With billions of assignments and class exercises given by our teachers, doctors in their own right, the older patients who seemed a lot crazier than we were, the constant confrontation by Mr. Paulinus, disciplinarian, or should I say, custodian of the peace, and the lack of communication with what was now termed the civilized world. Our first year at the asylum was one met with confusion and utter bewilderment. We felt as if we were not being shielded from or corrected of madness, but rather being driven right into it. What in the world was happening? By our first few years in the asylum, three things had already been spelled out to us. One, the den was not a place for the weak-willed or lily-livered. Two, when in doubt, always remember, monkey see, monkey do. And three, the only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary. So we learned to work and work hard. The quick ones among us soon became pros in the hustle for hot water and the tussle for bathing spaces. Our young Cornelians, true to their mascots, the eagle, soon learned how to keep one eye on the plates and the other on the kitchen door, waiting for anything synonymous with the word extra. Before I forget, let me ask this question. I'm sure most of you have witnessed the scorching Abuja heat, but how many of you have had to cut grass until your limbs were sore in this unforgiving weather? No hands up. I didn't think so. We had entered the last year of our junior class when the ill feeling of euphoria hit us. In our minds, we had arrived. But the administrators knew better, and they sought to cure us. The antidote they chose was one day of in-school suspension with a follow-up of one week out of school suspension for the female members of our sets who decided that they were now mature enough to explore the forbidden depths at the boys' system. I can't remember clearly whether it was the fact that we had to cut grass till our palms got blisters or the punishment that saw us breaking a slice of bread each for breakfast with water as opposed to wine. But something definitely sent the message the administration had been so fervently trying to pass across. We had to get off our bottoms if we had to get to the top. And so, we were left with no choice but to cudgel our brains as we wrote what was to be our first external examination in the den. That year, we proved that hard work, focus, and sheer determination could bring success. 32 students got 12 distinctions and one student, Blessing Puri, got all distinctions. This was a welcome bowls from the blue. <laughs> Encouraged by this positive test results, our doctors believed we were now ready to take on the rigors of the senior class. By this time, we had learned a few things about ourselves. Princess Joel was the brain. Simi, our walking dictionary. Obidibo, the right notes. Ife, the perfect picture. Nicole, our dancing queen. Chubi, our mascots. And Pap Chuck, our grandfather. <laughs> we had entered the senior year with great dreams and even greater expectations. Some of us have been glad to drop fine arts in the junior class, only to find the same art in biology. But this time, with a stone-faced Mr. Jacko, who could give you a cool zero if diagrams were not properly leveled, proving that she was not only an authority in biology, but also that she would tolerate no academic poison. We were beginning to see what it really meant to be senior students when we arrived at our penultimate year. It was decided that it was time to hand over the baton of leadership in the den to the now five-year-old class of 2013. Many were called, few were chosen, pacts were made, promises were broken. And finally, on November 27, 2011, we chose a captain who claimed to possess the gifts of raising sinking ships as well as a set of 31 other prefects. 
these young men and women would go on to redefine efficiency and excellence. Who can forget the Black Pearl and her counterparts or God punishment? <laughs> Prefectship was taxing, yet rewarding. Thus, we were starting to have faith that perhaps the same, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes held true when the unexpected happened. The most anomalous set of individuals barged into our comfortable lives to introduce yet more insanity in the guise of the dreaded man of war. We thought we had exceeded this trip to hell, but alas, how wrong we were. First, there was the initiative test which saw Ogochuku sprinting in 400 meters race with a frenzied chicken clutch under her armpits. <laughs> then came the obstacle course which left Chimizi breathless after passing through a tire. But behold, our greatest battle was still to come in final year. We had to overcome our most formidable challenges yet in that stupid, annoying test, otherwise known as the SAT. We also battled another exam, which always encourages craziness, otherwise known as the WIAC. And just when we thought it was all over, we were confronted by the exam, which nobody ever cries over, also referred to as NECO. But the plethora of examinations and university applications helped to open our eyes to the wealth of opportunities outside the den. And before long, we, the class of 2013, began to construct this flight, graduation 2K13, for our final departure from Abuja. Our final year here was also the year that witnessed a change in the directorship of the asylum. Many of us will never forget the words, I will always catch you. <laughs> With these same words, a couple of our brothers had their say in the asylum cut short. With the way red cards were dished out to those considered not worthy in character, final year was the year that Jesus became everyone's best friend. <laughs> Many were worried that our story had become akin to the biblical pharaoh who would not let God's people go. But despite all the challenges faced, we have persevered and prospered. After all, what character on earth do we not have? In our sets, we have someone who writes with so much wit, but whose second name is not Achebe. We also have someone who has not only proved himself a madman, but also a man made of steel. One of our colleagues already plans to give the symbols a literal run for his money. Clearly, our achievements speak for themselves. It was in this sense that for the first time in the asylum's history, the position of Secretary General was handed over from an LGC alumnus, Muiwa Oyatugun, to our very own Tilden Chima. It was in this set that Maureen Ayawu made mincemeat of the SAT with her almost perfect score of 2318. In this set, we can prove to you that one cannot spell Muti without M I T. And we are looking forward to Yadel as the next Ben Carson from Johns Hopkins, and Tilly telling us all about his experiences at Cornell. Without a doubt, I can say that these past few years have been the culmination of a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, a lot of toil, and I know our parents will agree with me, a lot of money. Luckily, we have been able to carry on through the joys and pains, the ups and downs, because of all the friends who have supported us through the earth wing. Yes, friends. We have realized that even in a madhouse, close, lasting friendships can arise. Some may be based on very similar interests, like that of the FM boys and their equally matched counterparts, the common room babes. Some may have been formed with the need to achieve a common goal, like that of the b-ball boys. Other friendships have arisen as a result of similar personalities, like those of the dodgy dealers of the XV clan, the ever-bubbly sunshine girls, and of course, such an Ebo, whose bond would always remain much larger than life. <laughs> Thus, after staying the asylum ends, I want to send special thank you notes to all the friends who have made LGC home. To our teachers who loved us enough to stand up to us, thank you for gallantly sharpening our focus whenever we stray the way. To those wonderful people who often go faceless and nameless, the non-academic staff, we say thank you for your silent and often ignored contributions to our correction process in this facility. To the administration, 
which has had the task of forming and reforming all 106 students in this esteemed asylum. Indeed, these six years have paid off, and we can confidently assure our doctors and caretakers that their time, money, and goodwill have not and will never be wasted. To our dear parents, thank you for your endless sacrifices. We pray that our dreams remain your dreams, and your dreams remain ours, and that someday those dreams, like Martin Luther King's, will become reality. To our younger patients whom we leave behind, we can only wish you good luck in this asylum. And don't worry, the real world will probably be a lot crazier than this. And finally, to the members of the graduating class for making every ordinary school day seem extraordinary, or at least not so boring. What can I say? We did it. Every single one of us here. Thank you all for making this possible. And remember, no matter what challenge you may face, or adversity that might befall you, Put those shoulders a little straighter, stand a little taller, and raise that head a little higher. Not just because you belong to one of the greatest families here at LGC, but also because, above all, you're in good hands. You're in God's hands. So to God Almighty, the Alpha and Omega, thank you for being the source of all we have and are and for making this day possible. Attention passengers and fly Leila graduation to K13. We have now arrived at destination. Ladies and gentlemen, for the past six years, we have, we have constructed the plan or plane graduation 2K13 and set it apart. And ladies and gentlemen, this plane has been in the hangar for just too long. Agreed. A plane in the hangar is safe. But then again, I ask you, is that what planes were built for? No. So, ladies and gentlemen, we must fly, and fly we shall, until we have reached the stars through acidity. Now, class of 2013, are you ready to go? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it is now the right time to say finally, we have arrived. The weather bright, the vision perfect, the time ours, the forecast success. Please welcome into the global scene the class of 2013. Thank you. Please be seated. Your attention, please. Thank you. Thanks for your attention. I now invite the chairman of the Board of Trustees, Reverend Father Jude Odiaka of the Society of Jesus to give the vote of thanks. As part of the vote of thanks, Father Odiaka will also present an honorary Loyola Award to the guest speaker.
That was an excellent, excellent, excellent presentation. Let's give him a round of applause. That was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And it's been a wonderful day today. You will all agree with me. And of course, if it has been wonderful, people have made that possible. On behalf of the Jesuits of the Northwest Africa province, on behalf of the members of the Board of Trustees of Loyola, on behalf of the members of the governing body, I would like to stand here to offer our own gratitude to those who have made this very day possible. First, let me say a very, very big thank you to the president of this very institution in the person of Reverend Father Ehi Omoragbon for his leadership, for the very many ways he has led this very institution to where it is today. My big thanks to Father Emmanuel Ugweje, the principal of this very school, for his own excellent uh, support that he has rendered to this very institution. My thanks to the vice principal, um, Sister Ibele, for her own contributions, silent contributions to this very institution. My thanks to all of the um, head teachers, um, the various teachers, um, the um, non-teaching staff, um, members of the committee who have put this very graduation ceremony together. Um, my big, big thanks to the choir. Uh, my big thanks to the parents who have made this day possible in sending their words to this very institution. My very big thanks to the graduating students. We are proud and proud and proud and proud of you. We know you will do wonders. You will do wonders in this very country and beyond. And of course, our very big thanks to our special guest, our very special speaker today for that very, uh, for those words of inspiration. On behalf of um, Loyola Jesuit College, I'd like to say thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you to all of you. Thank you very, very, very much. I now invite the entire student body to lead us in the LJC school song. Please stand.
It is my honor to invite the provincial of Northwest Africa, Reverend Father Jude Odiaka of the Society of Jesus to give us the final benediction. Um, can you please be seated for just a minute? Some of you probably know us, Jesuits, in this part of the world. We are young and we are few. And we are growing. Young, few, growing, all of those come with challenges. And I'm talking about the challenge of personnel. I hope that someday from the graduating class of 2013, we will have some of you applying to the Society of Jesus. <clears throat> personnel challenges, of course, result in changes in movement, 